Hello, this is Harry Norman for Proactive Investors, and welcome to another Proactive Audio interview. Today is the 17th of March 2010, and I'm talking with Tim Cochlin, President and CEO of Lydian International, listed on the TSX Metals and Mining Sector, stock ticket LYD, share price 73 cents Canadian, market cap $34.46 million Canadian, web address lydianinternational.co.uk. Tim, thank you very much for joining us for this interview. My pleasure, Harry. Thanks for having me. Lydian International recently announced a 40% increase in the gold resource at the Amulsar Gold Project in Armenia to 1.4 million ounces. How pleased are you with progress at Amulsar to date? Well, I'm quite pleased given the challenges we've faced. And perhaps if I might just outline that, the way the Armenian law works is you have a three-year expiration license, which you need to convert into a mining license immediately after that. So 2008, our drilling program was focused entirely on defining a resource. So we dived into the area where we thought we had the best rock chip samples and soil samples, focused two drilling rigs on that area, belted out a resource as quickly as we could and converted our license to a mining license. That left a lot of targets undrilled, obviously, around the hill where we had other encouraging samples and stuff that we were actually collecting while we during 2008. 2009 was focused on identifying the potential of those target areas around the resource and in some ways we were governed by the desires of our joint venture partner Newmont at that stage in terms of doing that. So we didn't do much step out drilling around the existing resource. We weren't focused on extending that resource but regardless of that almost accidentally we managed to increase it by another 400,000 ounces. So I think that augurs well for the future. The other thing that's worth pointing out and that commented on in all of our independent reports written by CSA, Kroshev, Olitsky Associates and available on the CEDAR website in Canada is that we have high-grade zones within the current resource that we're yet unaware of in terms of trajectory and extent. So once we drill those out this year, I think we'll see that resource and the grade increase significantly. Do you think there's much gold left to discover at Amulsar, Tim? Absolutely. If I might just go immediately back to that previous point, we believe that with the infill drilling, we've been drilling at 80 meter space centers now, which is a very wide spacing. Infill drilling to 40 meter space centers that we'll be able to better define those high grade zones and thus increase the bulk grade. The resource envelope itself is open in all directions. We've got 20% of the drill holes open at depth. We have the Aratu area, which is a kilometre north of the resource envelope, where we drilled in our very last hole of the season last year, 229 metres of the gram. That's wide open. The Arshak area to the south, where we drilled 94 metres at 1.5 grams. That's yet to be followed up. And various other soil sampling, rock chip areas, porphyry targets that we have yet to test. So, yes, I do think there's gold left to discover at Amosa. Were you surprised by the market's reaction to the news of Newmont selling their stake in Amulsar to Lydian? A little. We knew it was a possibility that the stock price would drop. We expect that the main reason for this, well, two reasons basically, are one, that some of the buyers dropped off the scene expecting us to be financing in the short term, and then also that the market didn't quite understand why Newmont would be leaving the project given its potential. So perhaps if I might amplify a little bit that last point, Basically, there are three reasons, in our view, that Newmont were stepping away from Amalsar. The first one is, as I've mentioned previously, we have a mining license that was granted to us last year. We just completed all our concession agreements on that license this year. It's basically ready to go into production. It's over 600,000 ounces of the resource, expandable, of course. But the government expects us to be in construction and production stage by 2013. And certainly, we've designed a program which, with feasibility commencing this year, to ensure that we're ready to do that. That doesn't really suit the appetite of a major when they're dealing with a bulk tons low-grade resource such as Amalsar. They would rather spend two or three years drilling the project out and, and producing a sort of bulk tonnage lower-grade super bit type resource. The other point is that in regard to the previous agreement we had with Newmont, we're in what would be called feasibility space, which means that they would have had to have been paying 100% of all exploration costs for this year. And I think the third point is that some of your listeners may be aware that they've shut their office in Turkey and that they've been joint venturing their projects out in Turkey. So there seems to be at least some sort of retreat from the region. How encouraged are you by the results of the column leach tests that you've released today? We're very encouraged by those, Harry. I just wish they had have gone on for a little bit longer. We stopped them at 70 days with still increasing recovery trajectories at around about 89, 88%, I think, for two of our 19 mil crush composites. 
they certainly looked like they were going to cross the 90% recovery mark with just a shorter yeah. further period of leaching. The column leach tests, you know, last year we released those bottle roll tests which were highly encouraging but very preliminary. Column leach tests really are the litmus test and a much better proxy in terms of how the leaching process works and all indications are that we're on track for a cheap leaching process. What is the situation with the Drajni lead zinc project in Kosovo, Tim? Well, Drajnia and Kosovo as a whole, those projects still remain of significant interest to us. There's an enormous amount of potential at Drajnia. It's open in all directions and even with some open pitable resources. But we need to focus, obviously, on the developing gold project and on some of the new projects we're acquiring within Armenia. And so we've been working with potential JV partners on those Kosovo projects. And we're quite a ways down the track with one of them and expect to be announcing a heads of agreement in the short term. Are you looking at other possible gold or base metal projects, Tim? We're looking at gold in Armenia principally and also elsewhere in the Caucasus. What you may not be aware of is that for the last four years we've been conducting regional drainage and exploration programs around Armenia collecting bulk leach extractable gold samples which are samples of drainage which indicate gold in the headwaters. We've done the entire country and as we speak we have guys following some of those targets up with a view to putting in license applications. So yes, we are looking for gold in Armenia. Who are Lydian International's major shareholders and how supportive are they, Tim? Major shareholders are International Finance Corporation, which is the equity investment arm of the World Bank, Newmont Mining Corporation. They've taken some stock as part of this deal, which should comfort the market in terms of their view of the potential of the project. European Bank of Reconstruction and Development and Quarry Bank, which is the well-known Australian resource bank. They're incredibly supportive, but we work very closely, particularly with the International Finance Corporation, who help us with environment and community relation issues and ensure that we meet World Bank standards. What is Lydian International's financial situation going forward? Well, all exploration companies need to raise money or to be financed, and we are looking at a wide range of options going forward, including some interest, obviously, at Amosa from some gold producers in terms of financing us moving ahead. We've got the support of our big bank existing shareholders, and interestingly enough, there may be quite a unique situation developing at the end of 2011 with some cash flow from Kosovo. What can investors expect from Lydian International over the next 12 to 18 months? This year, we've got 16,000 metres of drilling to go, lots of news. We'll have one rig which will be focused on defining those high-grade intersections within the resource, another one expanding the resource, and a third rig which will be drilling out some of these new discoveries, such as the Arato area. We're hoping to expand the resource in excess of 2 million ounces by the end of this year. We're starting feasibility, so next year I expect a drilling program which will exceed 16,000 metres, perhaps be in the region of 20, and we'll be looking at completing feasibility at the end of 2012 and with our ongoing regional program in Armenia taking some new exciting gold projects in that environment. Remember Proactive Investors is not an investment advice service. Make sure you register at proactiveinvestors.com or proactiveinvestors.co.uk for our weekly newsletter which will keep you informed about our articles, interviews and events. Thank you for listening.